back down here for another day of the bike project and uh, I am pretty behind on these videos. I started a new, uh, I got some new responsibilities at my real job and that's really been taking up a lot of my uh, mental horsepower and uh, just time, but that's a good thing too. So I have probably like, I think we're up to like 15 episodes filmed right now, but I just have no time to edit them, but we are gonna get them all edited. I just need more time. And even if we gotta go into the summer, it's okay. So the, uh, the bike, uh, pretty much all the hard parts are installed. Uh, we got this thing ready to go. Uh, if I actually filled that with fuel right now and, and, get, and, and charged the battery, gave it a start, it would fire off. Uh, so what we're gonna move to next is the wiring harness. Uh, today we're gonna begin that. I don't know how much of the, uh, I don't know how much of the process I'm actually gonna get filmed because uh, what this is gonna entail is me basically sitting down with uh, paper and just figuring out where every wire uh, touches every other wire, uh, how many pins for each connection, um, and basically just coming up with a whole plan. But for what we're putting on the bike is of course, uh, so I found this tail light a while ago, and on my 08 I actually had um, the, the tail light of course, and then I had a left and a right blinker actually bolted to the top of the fender. and. I didn't really like it because it, it's not as it's not as clean looking as what I found on the internet, and I forget where I actually bought this like two or three years ago because of how much I did not like the blinkers on my old bike. So this one has a license plate light, a stop light, a running light, and then the blinkers are actually inside here. So that's going to be way cleaner because all this is going to do. Uh, that's it. It's just going to hang down below the fender. You're going to barely see it. And um, there's not going to be any any blinker studs up here to catch my boot when I uh, mount and dismount the bike. So these uh, these terminals, of course, they have to touch something. Um, the headlight that I haven't got the headlight in yet. Uh, it's coming from Baja Designs. It's that Squadron Pro. Uh, however, uh, Mike Booz actually recommended to me. He says you cannot you cannot run that light on the street um, just because of how bright it is. So I found this, this is a scene design and what it is is it's a LED dimmer kit. And basically what this does is uh, it's programmable so you can tell it uh, what percentage of brightness that you want the LED to, to, to burn at. And um, basically what it does is it just flashes the LED very quick. That's why sometimes when you see videos of uh, high-end cars with LED headlights, it always looks like the the headlights are flashing or, or blinking. Well, they actually are. They're, they're just coming on and off very quick to uh, give you a low and high beam, um, you know, amount of light coming out of them. So we're gonna have to read the instructions. A uh, ton of wires coming out of this thing, but we'll get that figured out. This is the uh, the Vapor Speedo. And what thing, one thing, so this actually has like uh, yellow and red indicator lights for, uh, you can set up warnings for coolant temperature and RPM. And, um, it actually gets power from the battery. Um, so I gotta figure out if it needs constant power or if it just needs ignition power. Um, but we're gonna hook that up to a 12 volt source so we can get those uh, indicator lights to function and then also not continually drain the battery in here like what happened with my endurance. Here is that con uh, control switch. Uh, this is actually off of a 450L. So I'm gonna have to uh, obviously cut this connector off and pin out all these wires and find out you know what each uh, what each wire does and come up with a drawing for that these things are awesome I found these oh so anyway I found these on the internet I think it's a Canadian company Kozo K-O-S-O -O. these are the, the Mars LED indicator lights I did not realize how bright these things were they are they're they're blindingly bright so I'm not gonna hook them up to a battery now but um once they're on the bike, of course, we'll show you. And one thing I really like about these is um, they're rubber mounted. So if you um, you know if you hit them while you're cleaning bugs off the front or something snags them, uh, they're not going to break off this post, which I thought was a really cool design. Plus, um, they're all aluminum construction, and when I say bright, I'm talking blinding bright. So that'll be cool because I do want people. If I'm across from traffic. I want the person coming at me to be able to see which way I intend to go. Uh, people behind me, I don't really care because uh, 
one of the things you, one of the things you learn after a while driving motorcycles is you need to drive off, off offensively, not defensively. You need to be passing people, overtaking people to be the one making the decisions, not letting people make decisions for you. So if somebody's behind me, um, I usually use my hands as a signal, but I'm not so much worried uh, what people behind me are doing. And uh, that's why I want to have people coming at me, be able to see me better. Uh, one thing I did not do with the 08 uh, when the battery was always draining down is I had a I had a battery tender hook up to it, but it was kind of clunky. It just hung hung down on there, and then one time it actually it actually burned up on the exhaust. So this is a bulkhead fitting, and, or it's, or you can call it a panel mount. But uh, we're gonna put this on the bike like I don't know like. We're, it's basically going to be it's it's going to be a panel mount, so it's just going to be like a charge port on the side of the bike, screwed right to the plastics, and so I can, you know, come into the garage or you know if I'm not going to be running it for a little bit, the charge port is just going to be mounted right to you know maybe up here or something. I don't know. We'll find a good spot in the plastics where it's not going to hit my boot, and um, we'll be able to you know charge charge the bike by just taking the uh, battery tender cable and, and plugging it right into it, which is going to be super trick. I got this on. I got this on Amazon for like six bucks, which I thought was sick. They make these, I guess, for um, RVs and solar power panels, but all it is is it's a standard SAE connector, which is the same one that Battery Tender uses. So that's gonna be a really cool thing. Uh, things we're waiting on, we do not have the horn. Uh, I don't have the brake switch yet, and uh, I'm not gonna be putting a brake switch in the rear. Uh, I'm only gonna be putting a brake switch in the front. Uh, I had brake switches on the front and rear of my 08, however, I never used the, I really didn't use the rear at all. It's all It's all front brake, so. We're just gonna put a brake switch on the front, make it simpler. Of course, the uh, Baja Design Squadron Pro uh, headlight we're gonna wire in, and then what I, ended, what I ended up going with was a Heeltech Thunderbox power distribution mod module, and that I had to find uh, from Canada out in BC. Uh, that's on its way in the mail right now as well, and it's a, it has two circuits coming out, each one is 16 amps. So one circuit is gonna be for the headlight. Uh, the headlight looking like it's gonna draw 3.3 amps. And the rest of this stuff, like these LEDs, they use virtually like no power. So, I, you know, I'll be able to run uh, the headlight off of one circuit and everything else off the other. And basically how this works is somehow it automatically senses uh, when the motor's on, just hooked up to, it's really, it's really cool design. I'll talk about it more once it gets here. But uh, if you want to look it up, it's the Heeltech Thunderbox uh, TV U01 is the one that I got, and um, looking forward to that. That's going to be a much better setup than what I did on my 08, which was everything was just directly wired in it. It always drained the battery, and it freaked me out because uh, batteries are the like number one thing that freak that worry me. You know, battery electrical problems, battery fires, all that. Uh, one other thing I did order is uh, I thought I had more reflective uh, tape. This DEI Reflect the Gold. Uh, this is all I have left. So I ended up ordering a few more panels. And one of the things that we're gonna do is we're gonna reflect the gold. Uh, this whole bot, the whole bottom of this fuel tank. That that reflect the gold. It does not stick to plastic well. So if you have a plastic fuel tank, the uh, hydrocarbons actually leach through the plastic, and the adhesive for the reflect the gold stuff. It, it basically peels off, doesn't work good. So this being a, a titanium fuel tank that comes on this, and um, just how much area in here is all exposed to the uh, the engine that's gonna be at at least 180 degrees. Uh, what we're gonna do is, like I said, we're gonna get reflect the gold, and uh, we're gonna tape off that whole bottom side of the fuel tank. Not only is it gonna look trick, but it's gonna provide us some heat protection from uh, the fuel boiling and just you know, evaporating up through our vent here, probably, you know, onto my chest area. So just try to look for any little things like that along the way in this build that I can knock out now and not have to figure out later. But so what we'll do, I guess I'll, I don't know, I guess I'll set up a tripod to show you me doing a little scribble scratch. I don't, uh, I I might find a website that has like an electrical, de electrical design uh, setup thing later, but for now, I'm gonna get the paper and pen, uh, the pencil and paper out, and just kind of start figuring out each wire where its home is gonna be. And oh, the one thing I wanted to talk about, I found these 
these awesome uh, Sumitomo electrical connectors. They look exactly like the stock Honda ones that are on the bike. I found them super cheap on cycleterminal.com. So like each connector was like three bucks and you can get like a six pin, eight pin, three pin, two pin, whatever. So it's gonna look, and I uh, also, the sheathing I found is a military spec sheathing. So haven't ordered any of that stuff yet, but what I'm gonna do is figure out, you know, how many, how many connections each, I gotta figure it all out, long story short. So gonna get to that now. So good news is I was able to um, deconnect the, uh, the stock Honda uh, control switch. I, I did a quick look online, trying to see if I could identify this, this electrical uh, terminal. I didn't wanna just cut the wires. In case I can salvage this, that'd be awesome because then if this ever breaks, I can just get another one from uh, the OEM parts finder and plug it back in. So like I said, I was able to, uh, to de-pin this and then what I'm gonna do now is uh, use a multimeter and basically it's clip onto one wire and then manipulate the switch and figure out what each one of these wires does, record it down and uh, go from there. But if I can retain these terminals, that'd be awesome. So if anybody has an idea of what pin that, what connector this might be that Honda uses on a 2020 CRF 450L uh, control switch, that'd be awesome. But maybe I'll put more effort into that, but for now, I'm gonna figure out where these wires go. Many, many minutes later. The Honda switch, uh, we have it figured out, and what I wanted to avoid was uh, any type of overlap. So the uh, circuits that I picked, they don't coincide with anything else. So like the high beam, uh, the high beam has, you know, there's these these three touch when the switch is in high, and then these two touch when the switch is in high. Uh, because the um, high beam and the low beam, you know, for some reason they share these connections, I didn't want to touch those at all. So uh, for the high beam, we're going to be getting it off of, you know, a very, real clean connection from the blue to the white, and then the horn is going to get black, yellow to green. And the left blinker, it looks like the gray is the supply to the blinker. And then depending if you're left or right, you either hit orange or light blue. So um, the right blinker and the left blinker, they also have these um, feedbacks. So I don't want to mess with those either. But uh, we got that figured out. And here is the uh, schematic for the scene LED dimmer. And what I'm actually going to be doing is utilizing a three pole uh, toggle switch so that we can get... Uh, different brightness levels for the um, low beam. So I'll be able to program uh, low beam off, uh, you know, and then also maybe a 25 and a 30, you know, 50%, whatever on the low beam for like a, a day and night low beam. And then we'll always have the high beam. So with that third um, three position toggle switch somewhere else on the handlebars, we'll be able to, you know, go between low beam off, low beam night, and low beam day. So have a lot of variability with our light intensity considering this LED is going to be so bright which is cool well put it a full day it's four o'clock now i've been uh kind of doing artwork and messing around but um we're all done with the wiring setup and i think i'm gonna uh make a better drawing of these upstairs but this is what we got the next day ah uh, it's the next day i've been at it for about 24 hours and i think we have the uh the wiring harness all figured out so Give you a show here. So we got all of our pins figured out, um, the main schematic, and then the uh, the wiring harness schematic. So how this is going to work is, um, in general, we're going to have the, you know the battery, a charge port, and two circuits. Uh, circuit number one is going to be in charge of the headlight, and circuit number two is going to be in charge of the in charge of the auxiliaries. So we're going to have. Um, the battery uh, coming up to a fuse, and uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna fuse that at 15 amps. Um, since the uh, the Thunderbox, it can supply 16 amps uh, to each circuit, um, and also the, the the main connector coming off of the battery that we're using, uh, it's gonna be using an 18 gauge wire, and 18 gauge is only good for 16 amps at 12 volts. So uh, I figure 15 amps is gonna be a safe uh, amperage to choose from and considering the headlight might use I think it's gonna use about 3.3 amps and all this stuff I wouldn't guess I wouldn't guess more than two amps 
um, but we're gonna we'll take a current measurement once um, we get the harness designed and uh, hook up the 12 volts and see what it pulls so we're gonna have the battery and then uh, you know fused at 15 amps here's that charge port that we're gonna have on the side of the bike um, it's gonna come over to the Thunderbox um, that TBU01 and uh, circuit one is gonna come out uh, that's gonna be for the headlight so here's our uh, intelligent lighting controller um, with the um, that made by scene and uh, we're gonna have a switch for three different modes of low beam operation we'll be able to have a uh, low beam will because be, this is pro programmable we'll be able to have low beam off uh, you know low beam 20% and then another one 50% whatever so we, we can have a low beam setting for the day and the night uh, and then here that's gonna be our uh, headlight switch coming off of the um, the main control on the handlebar so then circuit 2 is gonna come over here separate from circuit 1 uh, it's gonna feed the uh, trail tech vapor so that we can get those uh, indicator lights at the top to work with, uh, for temperature and RPM of course a horn switch uh, because we're using LED turn signals uh, we need to use a special flasher uh, because of the low amperage draw that they um, they use up so we're gonna have the LED flasher go into our, our left and right turn signals, and then of course our brake switch, and then our constant running tail light. And then one of the things I'm gonna do different on this bike that I did not do on the 08 is I'm gonna put a, a tick in, uh, tail indicator cutout. So with the throw of one switch, it's gonna, uh, it's gonna separate the grounds into a, a primary ground and a secondary ground. And what that'll give us the ability to do is completely black out the back of the bike. So if I'm ever in a situation where I do not want any lights from the back of the bike, you know, going rearward, uh, I can, I'm gonna hide a switch on the bike somewhere and we'll be able to throw the tick and uh, black out the back. So this is, uh, this is what the wiring harness is generally gonna look like. It's gonna look like a part of the bike and it's going to be one one loom with a bunch of spider with a bunch of connectors coming off of it, and internal to the loom is where all the connections are going to be made. Uh, this is pretty standard in the automotive industry, and um, it's going to make it a lot easier to work on the bike uh, because everything's going to be connected. So each um, connection here, uh, you know, I've listed how many uh, cavities I'm going to need. Uh, so for you know the main control switch is going to need eight, LED flasher needs three. The uh, light, the, ski, the scene lighter controller, that's going to need six. Thunderbox four, you know, so on. And here's to the rear of the bike, going to need five. And then to make all that work, what I do is ahead of time, I figure out um, what, so here's the fuse. This is a connector. And then this is where those wires out of the back side of the connector go. So starting very ba at the basic, you know, we're going to have the battery, you know, positive, negative. It's going to go through a HX. 040-2 uh, connector and then out of cavity one is going to connect to fu2 and of course the negative side of the battery or i'm sorry the ground and then so for the fuse you know it's going to come basically right out of um the b1 so b1 is going to feed here which touches fu2 and there it's listed right here too so this wire and this wire are the same because of the notation here so hopefully that makes sense so then we're also gonna have a charge port and uh, here's the headlight. So the head, you know, the headlight, headlight is gonna touch IQ six and eight. And then of course, uh, to our ground bus. So here is the um, IQ 275. This is how the electricity is gonna flow. And this is how we're gonna wire it. So, you know, we're gonna be connecting, you know, some of these cavities to circuit one, HL, you know, they're obviously that's the output to the headlight. And uh, I still need to figure out that one. There's a few I need to still figure out because I haven't received them yet. And I haven't gotten a chance to pin them out. Uh, but here's our main control switch, all of our cavities and their connections. Uh, that was that, um, that pin out of the main control switch. So we're actually not going to be using all the wires out of the main control switch. And that's fine because some of those are devoted just for indication. Uh, you know, we got our, our Thunderbox going out to circuit one, circuit two. Uh, the flasher, how that's going to connect. Horn. This is that switch. I still need to, uh, I haven't received this yet, so I still need to figure out uh, where the low beams uh, mode selector switch, where that's gonna pin out to. Um, the vapor, oh, I did not didn't talk about this. So one of the things I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna put a spare 12 volt connector in it somewhere. 
So I'm gonna hide this on the bike as well. And if I ever have a day where I, I just, I need an extra 12 volts for something, whether it be a, you know, a USB charger or a heated grip or something, I'm gonna have a connector in the bike that I can just, I can plug into and plug out of and use that 12 volts as, uh, as needed. So that, that, that spare will be super cool. Uh, here's our tick, our tail indicator cutout, and um, it's gonna be pretty easy. Um, brake switch, here's our flasher circuit, and then of course, our tail light. So from this point, what we're gonna do is, uh, good. so here is, here is our LED flasher. And uh, basically what I'm gonna do at this point is start positioning all this stuff and figure out uh, where on the bike I want it to go. Um, you know, I could mount it here, or this would be actually be a not bad place for it also. So what we're gonna do is take all these individual components that I have and physically put them on the bike. And then uh, once they're on the bike, we're gonna start measuring uh, cable runs and seeing how long of a wire I need between everything and uh, where the harness is kinda gonna, kinda gonna lay. I have, an, I have a general idea, but I haven't really worked out the details yet. So that's what's up in the next step. Uh, I think we're going to put an end to this weekend um, until I get the the headlight in, which should be shipping in to my door this week sometime. I'm not really getting anything productive done at, the, at this point, but I will show you what we look like so far. So we routed a couple cables and figured out some locations for some things. I already had to make one adjustment to the plan. So we were originally going to have um, one fuse uh, for both the charging circuit and the voltage delivery. However, due to wiring constraints, I think we're gonna do two fuses and um, show you how I, basically how I'm gonna have these fit out. I got these two pretty nice, um, they're waterproof fuses and they have their own little uh, cap compartment. So I think we're gonna run those and have these two kind of just sitting on top of the battery uh, like that. And then um, the charging port, we're gonna put this thing uh, right up in here. Uh, so it's going to be real tucked away, barely even going to see it. So we're going to drill a hole through the side. I was actually thinking about putting it right in the back here, um, underneath the fender, because there's more room to reach in there with your hand and plug it in. However, if I ever get in, in a rainstorm, it's going to be flinging water up on there. So this is going to be super tucked out of the way. You're not even going to see it, but the port will actually be right here. And then, uh, with the wires coming up in here, and that's why I'm gonna have to use two fuses, uh, just because this is pretty heavy gauge and I don't wanna have to reduce this from 10 gauge down to 18. So we're gonna fit the, uh, like I said, the charging, charging port right on the side there. And um, here is our tick switch. And uh, I have a location figured out for that, but a real nice uh, fully waterproof switch, gonna be super tucked away. And this is the switch for headlight control. It's off of, I got it off Amazon, it's for a scooter. Um, so it actually mounts on the bar and uh, you be able to click around your thumb. However, the three position switch that came with it, this thing is super cheap. It's actually complete trash. So we're gonna gut this and I got these switches. These are a little bit nicer, uh, three position rockers. So we're gonna solder this up into here and actually retrofit the uh, how retrofit how it came with um, this higher quality switch and uh, that'll be a real trick. It'll, it'll be on the bar like that and we'll have uh, you know low off and high for low beam be pretty sweet. Um, that's about it. So it's actually starting these are the plastics that are going on it pretty uh, way better looking with all red just like the 2021 and after bikes did and um, so it'll be good to have the week uh, kind of just to think about some stuff and go over things in my head. Um, maybe I'll come up with a better idea for how I want to route some of the wire um, over the week. But uh, put this, I'm going to put this away for now and give us some time to think about and uh, come at it fresh next Friday.